Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be talking about Gabby Hanna getting exposed by one of her ex-friends, Alex James, and we're also covering the real reason why the H3 podcast families ended. But before we get into it, can I introduce you guys to the sponsor of today's video, which is Magic Spoon. If you're a little health nut like me, these cereals have zero grams of sugar, only four grams of net carbs, and 13 freaking grams of protein for one serving, which is around one cup. Like who the f and they taste so good. They taste insane. Uh, they have frosted cocoa, peanut butter, and fruity. It's just, it's so crazy to me that these taste so good. Cause like I used to have, like I used to be obsessed with cereal when I was a kid, but it's like, I had to stop eating it cause it was literally like plain sugar. But these ones, they 100% taste better than regular cereal but they're healthy. So it's like, I don't feel guilty eating cereal anymore. Like it's just like, ooh, nutritional snack. Um, my two favorite have to be cocoa and frosted, which is weird because frosted is kind of vanilla, but like cocoa is just so chocolatey and rich. Mmm, mmm, yes. And I look at just have it for dessert sometimes because <laughs> it's like, oh, healthy, you know? <laughs> They also have four other flavors. They have cookies and cream, maple waffle, cinnamon, and also blueberry. It's keto friendly, gluten free, soy free, freaking grain free. I don't even know, man. Is this a sponsorship or a mukbang? But yeah, definitely check them out. It's going to be linked down below. I also have a code for $5 off. You can use code hot tea at checkout. Or you can go to magicspoon.com slash hot tea. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their products that they back it with a 100% no questions asked refund. So, you know, you can eat it, be like, I don't like it. And then they'll, they'll return you the money. But like, it's not going to happen because trust me, it's so good. All right, thanks again so much to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get into the tea. So as we all know, Gabby Hanna has been talked about a lot in the past few months. I mean, just look at my channel. Almost every week there is a new video on her. Even though the drama with her has cooled down with her whole series and whatnot, we've been talking about Gabby because she keeps going on these podcasts like Mom's Basement, Half-Baked, check your head and others and she brings back the drama that she's been in again and again most of the people who were involved like jesse james trisha paytas daniel preda and joey graceffa have told their truth and made peace with all the drama all right maybe except trisha paytas but she has talked about gabby in several episodes and now alex james an ex viner and ex friend of gabby's has made a part two to his video exposing her lies his previous video gabby jeanette hannah you tried it was posted about two weeks ago i have a video on it if you want to check it out out for more details. Anyway, Alex has talked several times on social media and has made previous videos on Gabby. His first one was shortly after Jesse Smiles posted her video on Gabby back in 2019. As we know, Jesse and Alex are good friends and both of them used to be friends with Gabby, so Alex probably wanted to back Jesse up because that's what friends do and also he wanted to share his experience with Gabby. In the video he posted a few days ago that we're gonna look into, he looks over one of the videos of her series where he's mentioned. And pretty much he's debunking her lies as well as giving more context to the situation. Now, if you are familiar with the Jesse slash Gabby situation, you know it involves a quite sensitive subject, a SA. So if you're sensitive to that, this is a little disclaimer. Alex starts off by saying that he doesn't remember every single thing from eight plus years ago. He also had to go back to some very old messages and emails and like who even does that beyond violating to me why am i now having to show an email with a date and show text messages with a date to prove what gabby already knows then alex reacts to a podcast gabby was in talking about mental health in the clip he comments on gabby is asked what was her final point where she realized she wanted to break from the internet gabby makes a statement where she describes having two options either sharing a lot of personal information and exposing people or making a decision to take a step back in gabby's words she chose the second option and alex is like but then you did it anyways with the series mm -hmm. what was like the final straw that made you say you know what i'm gonna take a break there came a point where there were so many lives it was just like a, a frenzy so i was like okay i can continue to do this i can put all this out here all of this incredibly personal information i can drag these people all back into it with me or i can make the choice to remove myself from the situation but not even three months later that is exactly what you did with this series 
Then Alex brings up a point that Gabby claims the high school f***ing bullies moment as her mental breaking point, but then she also claims everything she said in that video that she stands for. He brings up the fact that the day she released that infamous podcast was the day that she had the three hour phone call with Jesse. Alex expresses how upset the whole situation has made him and that he is really heated about it. He questioned Gabby's thought behind all of this. He's like, you want an apology from Jesse? And then she goes back and forth between wanting an apology and then back backtracks and says she doesn't want an apology. Next, Alex goes over the situation that provokes Jesse to make her initial video on Gabby, the Gabby texting fans about her situation. If you are not familiar with that, I suggest checking Jesse Smiles' video since she breaks down the whole thing, but the gist of it is that in 2019, a fan asked on Twitter why Jesse and Gabby aren't friends anymore. Then somebody brought up the R apologist allegations, Gabby DM'd a fan, Jesse was brought up in the conversation, Gabby shared some personal information about Jesse's mental health. Health. The fan then felt uncomfortable, they shared their DMs with Jesse, and there was another fan that was DMed by Gabby and more on that. Anyway, Alex brought up the FaceTime call Gabby had with Curtis and how she tried to brush it off as a call from an unknown number. Idiot. So you think we're just gonna believe that you answered a FaceTime from a number that you do not know? You decided to FaceTime Curtis right after Jesse told you that she doesn't want to be friends with you anymore. And you told him that you never believed Jesse. Then he makes the funniest comparison. He said, Gabby looked like the mix of Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin from Tiger King in one of her videos. Oh, and that little YouTube video that she posted where she been looking like Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin had a baby. Okay, sitting there on that ugly green couch. Back to the topic, Alex goes on to say that he doesn't wish ill upon Gabby. He doesn't have to like her to wish her well. He then plays a clip from his first video on her, which in that clip he says he doesn't want Gabby to not succeed in her career. He just wants her questionable actions to be held accountable. Let me just replay what I said about Gabby the first time I ever even spoke about her. So when Jesse titled her video, Gabby Hannah needs to be stopped, that is what she is talking about. The monster-like thoughts and behaviors and actions. Not Gabby Hanna's career needs to be stopped. Girl, we all have a God-given dream. You have a destiny and you will fulfill that destiny, Gabby, and not no human can stop that. And what comes along with that destiny is realizing you didn't have to do all the things that you did to get where you are now. He added that even though all of this whole situation has been made public, the audience still doesn't know what fully happened behind the scenes. Alex gets into the timeline. He starts off by saying that back in November 2013, he had a job opportunity in LA. He wasn't living there at the time, so he booked an Airbnb. He inserts a clip from Gabby's video of his video. It's a video exception, honestly. In Gabby's video, she says that I lied about the first time that I met Curtis and that I didn't meet him at Nash's house, that I met him on this tour. I met Curtis for the first time at Nash Greer's house at like the end of November, early December, 2013. And now the TMZ article of what he had done to Jesse hadn't come out yet. Literally just Viners had found out or had heard about what had happened. And now this guy, Curtis, is here in Charlotte. Apparently the reason why he was in Charlotte is because he was doing some tour. So he hit up Nash and was like, look, I'm in Charlotte. And she's like, yeah, no, it wasn't at the end of November. But she spells beginning wrong. She says begging. In that whole clip, he's talking about when he first met Curtis. Alex says that before the TMZ article was out about the allegations, he knew about it. The first time he met Curtis, he was with other Viners and they were all supposed to make content together. He had asked Jesse if she was uncomfortable with that and she told him it was fine. Alex said that he had somewhat of an online relationship slash friendship with Curtis before the allegations were public. Gabby, the first time I met Curtis Lepore was at Nash Greer's house. Jesse knew about, I called Jesse and I was like, hey, Curtis is apparently on this tour here around Greensboro. And he called Nash asking if he could come over and make some videos. I was like, girl, I can leave. Like, do you want me to leave? Because I will get right in my car and go home. She was like, no. And I told her, I was like, well, if he tries to bring up anything, cause mind you, at this point, the article had not come out yet. The article came out January 16th of 2014. So I met him before the article. I had a relationship online with him before the article before all these allegations that are now no longer allegations. And Curtis has actually tried to talk about it with him and others. Alex said that whenever that was mentioned, he didn't want to have that conversation with him. He felt uncomfortable and also Jesse is his friend. Alex also shares other situations where he was in the position of being around Curtis. He said he would always ask Jesse if she was okay with that. He told her beforehand every interaction that he had with him and as she also had stated in her last video on Gabby. Alex added that he regrets ever putting Jesse in that position. 
He quickly mentioned his experience with SA. He said he felt extremely uncomfortable with the Jesse slash Curtis situation. He tried to stay neutral, although now he wishes that he wasn't neutral towards Curtis. And towards the end, he did try to bring up some of the stuff and he was like, I'm sure y'all have already heard about, you know, the allegations that are against me. And I told him then, Curtis, you know that Jesse is one of my friends. I have been friendly with you on the internet. This does not involve me. And I just don't feel comfortable having this conversation. I asked him if he had a lawyer. He's like, yeah, he's one of the best. Situation that I've learned over time, I never should have stayed neutral in. Later on, he explains what he meant by friends or people on the internet regarding all of the Viners. He said at the time he was friendly with these people, but that didn't mean that he was really good friends with them. It was more work related. And let me just say, sorry that again, I am skipping around. But when Gabby tried to point out in her video when I was saying like, oh, these are just at the time people on the internet. And again, to me, Curtis, Jesse, Viners, they were just people on the internet at the time. I mean, again, at this time, her and I were not friends yet. Like these were still people on the internet for me. She showed tweets and a picture of when I went down to Miami. She says to visit Jesse, I was actually invited to go to the Benjamin Dash, which Jesse Smiles happened to also be invited to. And I reached out to her and I was like, hey, how far do you live from this Benjamin Dash? And she was like, not far. Like you can come stay with me. We can make videos. And I was like, oh my God, like this is awesome. But that doesn't mean that her and I are now besties. And yeah, like these are still people on the internet. Like, I'm sorry, Gabby, but for me, it does take a little bit longer to call somebody a friend. Like I know for you, you don't even have to hang out with a person to call them your best friend. Like, oh God, and make a whole YouTube video proving that you were her friends. After that, Alex brings up that he didn't live with Curtis. In fact, he tried to get out of there ASAP. He debunks some more lies that Gabby has claimed to be true. Alex goes on to say that Gabby has falsely tried to manipulate the narrative by saying he collabed and lived with Curtis for months, but Alex says he only stayed with Curtis for about a week and in the span of three to four months, he hung out with him a few times. Next, Alex talks about his beef with Curtis, aka a fight that they almost had. Again, at an influencer event promoting a movie, a lot of the Viners were there, including them. Someone told Alex that Curtis was talking crap about him, and then while they were out in public, Alex was ready to beat him up. Then Curtis pulled out a camera and started recording it. He moved on to talk about some tweet exchanges he had with Curtis, where Curtis was like, thanks for helping my lawyer, and Alex's response is just laughing. After that, Alex talked about the time where he met Gabby for the first time. They met at an influencer event party, Alex said he actually had Curtis kicked out from that party. But I was like, baby, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Curtis Lepore is here and uh, honey, these are the things about Curtis. Yeah, he don't need to be here. She was like, oh my God, like I had no idea. I didn't even check him in. Like, let me go tell security now. Alex then jumps into Gabby, who in his words was looking and asking for Curtis. Alex thought maybe she isn't aware, maybe she doesn't know about the situation. Then he told her everything that had happened. He said he spilled all the tea, which we do appreciate a good tea spilling on this channel. Gabby already knew I want friends with Curtis and I won't effing with Curtis at all. So for her to sit here and say everybody was saying that Curtis was a good guy, even Jesse's friend Alex. Gabby, the first time I met you, I was getting him kicked out of a party. And then I sat you down and told you all the mess that had unfolded. And when I told you what he told me, the truth of what he told me that second time about what he actually did to Jesse, you know what your response was? Well, that's not what I heard. And I said, Gabby, I'm sure that's not what you heard because he tried to tell me his whole lie of the story. Alex then goes on to say in his opinion and from Gabby's actions, he thinks that she never actually believed Jesse about what happened to her. He mentioned times where Gabby made comments like, if I were Jesse, I would have just kept my mouth shut. Or I'm so sorry that Curtis is going through all this. Like July or August of 2014, just a few months after all of this had went down, if I was in Jesse's position, I just would have kept my mouth shut. This is all she's gonna be known for now. She didn't just ruin his career, she ruined her career too. And then you said, I mean, seriously, if she didn't want attention, like- Now, we don't know if that's all true, but it's just, it's not sounding very good right now for Gabby at all. It just makes the claims that Gabby is a R apologist seem more legit, but for the sake of not getting sued, let me repeat, allegedly. And finally, Alex reacts to another podcast Gabby was in recently, called Half-Baked. He debunks more of her lies, some of which included how Gabby was threatened by Alex. Gabby sharing stories about Jesse being bad to her and that Gabby was actually helping her, how Alex fat shamed and told Gabby she needed a nose job and other smaller stories here and there. Overall, a lot of the video was smaller stories that we didn't know about. They do give context and explain some of the allegations Gabby has claimed against Alex in her series. Me listening to somebody who literally was not convicted at the time, asking me, can I tell you my side of the story? That does not make me a 
psychologist. That makes me a human fucking being. God, me listening to someone is not convicted at the time. Gabby, he was convicted April 23rd, 2014. You FaceTimed him years after this and listened to his side of the story. Not only listened to his side of the story, you confirmed to him that On that, right. on the phone call, the three-hour phone call, Jesse read the definition of apologist to me, and it's an urban dictionary, dude. There's not even actually, there's no real definition. It's not a real fucking word. So now you were never a apologist because that word doesn't even exist. But you still to this day want to claim I apologize just because you say the words I'm sorry does not mean that is an apology. Like what? <laughs> Jesse's statements about Alex always contacting her whenever he interacted with Curtis matched with what he said. Obviously, we weren't there, so we can't really say what exactly happened, but it seems like Gabby has changed around her story enough times where it looks kind of sus. Even her series has contradictions. By the way, we have videos on all of that, so check them out if you want more context. But tell me what you think about this. How do you feel about it? comment down below. Moving on, let's talk about families and why it really ended. Ethan Klein confirmed what people were already speculating in the most recent episode of After Dark. The speculation is that, and it's and it's true, is that we ended families to protect my parents from the internet, which is absolutely <laughs> true. As you guys know, there has been a lot of family drama, no pun intended, with the Trisha slash Ethan situation. Trisha going to Keemstar's podcast, Ethan being sad about it, people getting concerned about Ela, Ethan's mom Donna commenting on that on Twitter, Trisha coming after Donna, oh and Moses responding to and blocking people. It's been intense for sure. In the last Families episode, Ethan said the podcast wasn't supposed to be a long-term thing. It was supposed to be a fun gag after the tragic ending of Frenemies. Ethan was surprised they got to do 10 episodes even. People seemed to be really sad. The audience liked Ethan's parents a lot, but the fans understood that and there wasn't any negative response, so that's good. So let's get back into what Ethan had to say in response to the speculations. He said that the conspiracies are true, and since the beef that Trisha had with his mom, he doesn't feel okay to put his parents out like that. Trisha was like literally calling my mom out, and I was like, oh, this is gone, this is too much. And you know, I put my mom in that position, so I'm not, I'm not blaming, it's my fault. You know, I had my mom comment on drama, which I thought would be funny to have this naive, sweet lady who doesn't know anything about the internet, but the thing is, like, the show is a big platform, so... Yeah, that's... He mentioned that he wanted to end the podcast on high note and keep it pure without any drama, be it Trisha or Keemstar fans coming after his parents. Ethan also said that the podcast, even though it had only a few episodes, it did very well because it's themed around family content and advertisers on YouTube really like it and are pushing out family-branded content. So the podcast was getting a ton of sponsorships. The money was really good and people actually found it really entertaining. It was. Uh, Ethan was going back and forth for a couple weeks. It it's really hard because, first of all, despite everything, it was still like our most viewed podcast. It was a lot of money to say no to. People were actually really, really supportive of the end of Frenemies. A lot of the comments praised Ethan for standing up for his family. Here are some of the comments. One person said, I love that Ethan decided to end families to protect his parents from people like Trisha and Keemstar. I was also feeling things starting to get out of control and I really hope Ethan and Ela decide not to go to Moses and Trisha's wedding. Both M and T are terrible people. Protecting Donna is the most wholesome reason to end families. You're right, your parents don't need this negativity in their retirement. Trisha will lie through her teeth to cause drama and get attention. It's too bad families ended, but it was great while it lasted. Okay, you guys, so that was it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We post new videos every single day. All right, bye-bye.